Hey guys, Hudson here. I'm really stoked to share this quick video on a technique I use all the time to get everything from the foreground to the background of an image in focus, even if I'm having a little difficulty capturing that in a single frame. I'm gonna talk about how to capture two images uh, and blend them really easily, a real quick and easy way to blend a couple of images in On One Photo Raw to just get everything from that foreground, maybe it's a rock, maybe it's a person in the foreground, all the way to that distant background razor sharp and in focus with just sort of no futz and no hassle. So I'm gonna go through an image, start to finish, talk a little bit about what I was thinking in the field when I encountered it. Um, this is just a great technique if you encounter, you know, a scene in really low light where you can't stop down without, you know, creating a really long, long shutter speed or using a really high ISO and getting a lot of noise. Uh, or maybe you're using a lens that if you stop it way down to get more depth of field, you know it doesn't perform very well. This is just a great trick to kind of keep your lens in the sweet spot, keep a little bit shorter exposure, and still get everything in the frame in, 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 in focus. So it's a trick I use all the time. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to jump over on the computer and, and talk about what, I, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here. All right, so we've jumped over here on my desktop Mac Pro computer, and I've got some images from, from one of my favorite trips of all time to Patagonia. And there's a couple here that there was just no way I could get everything in focus given the conditions and, and the situation that I was in. So I, I'd come into Torres de Piney National Park. It was my first night coming into the park. Uh, Stacy, my wife, was, was pregnant. We were in the van. You know, we, we took a picture of sunset, and then it was kind of time to hightail it to camp and get camp set up. I packed everything away, and then right before we got to camp, I, I come upon this little lake that is perfectly still. Uh, and anyone who's spent time in Patagonia knows it's one of the windiest places on the planet. So a, a perfectly still lake is a really rare occurrence. And, and there were some really beautiful rocks. It was blue hour. It was like almost dark of night. But there was still some last light reflecting on the peaks and these really pretty rocks. Um, and I, I only had my Nikon D750 uh, with an 18 to 35 millimeter lens that I've been using for some video and a tripod out. I would have had to dig all kinds of stuff out to get to, to some of my better gear. So I was kind of stuck with this one lens, this one camera, this one tripod if I was going to do something really quick uh, while my wife was being extremely patient. I know, I know we know all, all know how that sort of feels when you're rushing. Uh, but it was such a beautiful scene and I hopped out, I put live view on on the camera and I could see that there was no way I was going to get the background mountains uh, and the uh, the rock all in focus at the same time. You know, this lens doesn't perform very well uh, at, at really, really narrow apertures up in the F22 range. Um, it was getting dark. You know, if you look here at the info of this shot, uh, I shot it at uh, ISO 1600 for three seconds at F8. You know, F8's generally where most of your lenses are going to perform at their best, so I wanted to get the best performance I could out of that little lens and, and so I took an image focused on the foreground rock. I was on the tripod in manual mode. I didn't change any of the settings and then I went ahead and, and focused in on the mountains and it's going to load here. I took a second shot that really was just focused on the mountains in the background, you know, and in this image the rock is way out of focus in the foreground. You know, there was no way uh, I played around with it in live view, zooming around and checking focus that I was going to get a good image of everything in focus at the same time. So that's my trick in the field is, you know, you find the thing that's in the foreground that, that you need sharp and in focus, zoom around in live view, make sure you've got it nice and sharply focused, take the image and then refocus using your live view on infinity in the background, capture both of those images with all of the same exact settings, same white balance, same ISO, same shutter speed, same aperture, uh, one right after the other. So you, if you take a look here, both images are at three seconds, 1600 ISO at F8. Uh, and so then what I'm gonna do is I'm, because I wanna work on the raw files here, I'm gonna combine these two images, but I'm not gonna combine the raw files here in On One Photo Raw. There's, there's no real way at this point to, to bring those two images together into one raw image. So what I'm gonna do is just do the raw tweaks where I have all the latitude and develop here. Uh, and I just want to make sure I squeeze all the, the the dynamic range out of this image and get it looking nice and crisp and ready to finish at it before I combine these two images in a Photoshop document in layers. So really quickly, I'm going to run in here. I want to take a look at my histogram while I work on the tones in the image. And I like to click on these little uh, 
these little triangles up here at the top so that I can see whether I'm affecting the white point. And the, you can see as I start moving tones, if I blow out those white points, you'll see the little red starting in the snow fields and the peaks. So I'm going to back off to where I'm just not quite blowing out the whites. And I'm going to set that the white point. I'm going to set my black point. You'll see the blue shadows around the rock start to, to turn blue as they go to black. I want to just set it to where I'm just barely into the black. So I'm using all of the tonal spectrum available in this image. And then I can kind of, kind of redistribute those tones a little bit with the contrast slider. I might want to back contrast off just a little bit, get a little more shadow detail here. And then I'm going to play with my highlights and shadows. I rarely do a whole lot of, with exposure unless I've kind of blown it in the field when I'm capturing the image in the first place and I want to add some exposure. It moves all of the data on the histogram left or right. You know, it's, it's going to sh shift everything. I want to differentially affect things here. So I'm going to pull the highlights back to get a little more detail in the sky and in the, the mountain's face here with the snow. And then I want to boost the shadows a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. You know, if I boost the shadows too much, it's going to enhance the noise. It's going to look like daylight. I photographed this scene in blue hour after the sunset, and I still want that, that, that dark feel. I just want to make sure that there's some tones in the shadows. So right about there, I think, is looking good. And, and this is the image that I focused on the rock. So I'm going to zoom in there. I just want to make sure everything looks nice and sharp. I'll probably do a little bit of sharpening here, and I like to hold the Option key down. It gives me a, a nice black and white view of the rock or of the image as I'm sharpening it. I see there's a little bit of noise. It's not enough to bother me. You know, I wouldn't want to sacrifice sharpness to do much noise reduction here, but I might might do a little bit of luminance noise reduction. And again, I hold down that that Option key to kind of have a view uh, without all the color getting in my way as I view it. And I think, you know, that looks, it's not a lot of sharpening. I'm doing just a, a little smidge. And I'll, I'll go ahead and back back out, look at the whole image. And then what I want to do is I'm going to shift click here. And I'm just going to click the sync button. So I've got both images selected, but the one that I just worked on is the highlighted image. That's the one that's active. I'm going to go ahead, click sync, and that's going to sync all those developed settings that we just did. Now you see they're all the same on both images and since they were captured exactly the same it's going to do the same kind of uh, have the same look on both of these the only thing different really is the focus so jumping back out here to browse for one second uh, you can we're, we're just going to have both of these selected again and I want to go ahead and, and click the layers button and that's going to activate this dialog box where it asks me if I want to add this photo as a layer or open it as a new photo? Well, I want to open both of these images as layers. So they're going to open in one layers uh, file with both of these set up as layers. And it's going to take a second to render uh, basically this whole thing into a Photoshop document. And, and I've chosen Photoshop document as what I like to work with. You could choose TIFF. That's up in your, uh, in your program settings. But this is going to jump us into layers here, and it's going to put one image on top of the other. And you can see that what we've got on top right now is the mountains in, in sharp focus and the rock out of focus. And so all I really want to do is select this top image that has the blurry rock. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my masking brush. And I want a 100% feather. That's that's this, uh, this, this little, you know, it's kind of, you actually, I might, well, you can see that dashed line and the circular line, the feather is the distance between those. It's how it's kind of fading the effect in inside the brush. I want it 100%. I want a real soft brush, so there's there's just that dashed line. I want the opacity to be 100%. Uh, and I can choose the size with my bracket keys, so the right bracket key makes it bigger, left bracket key makes it smaller. And and all I'm going to do is, is come in here and I'm just going to paint the foreground out. We're right now in paint out mode. You can see that swath go through right there on the mask. Uh, and I'm just going to really down and dirty quickly mask that foreground out of that image where the foreground's blurry. And now, boom, there you go. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You can't even tell where I did it. Nope, there it is. We can take a look at the mask by just clicking this button. It's a nice soft mask. Boom, the foreground is done. Um, before I jump out and, and finish edit this photo, there's a couple little things I'm noticing here that, that I'm not really happy about in the image. I'm going to zoom in to 50% here, uh, hold down the space guard to get my hand tool, and I want to get rid of this little branch that's in the foreground that I didn't notice when I was photographing it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab the, uh, the perfect eraser tool. 
I'm going to shrink that brush down a little bit and I'm just going to, this brush always kind of blows my mind how, how well it works. I'm just going to literally brush that whole thing out in a go here and see how that does. Oh, oh you know what? I'm going to undo that. I should have created a stamp layer. It's because there's two layers going on here. I'm going to go ahead here in my menu up at the top and I'm going to uh, create a new stamped layer. And what that does is it creates a composite. Uh, because what I was doing was actually erasing something. I was working on something that's not even there because we've erased it. And I was working on that layer where we erased the bottom. It's all cloned out. So I want to work on this composite layer, this new stamped layer that actually is made of, of both of those layers. It's like a new layer that just is at the stage we are in the layer edit. And I'm going to go ahead and do just what I did. I'm going to paint this whole little disturbing branch out. Let's see how good a job it does. Amazing. That's just ridiculous. Uh, there was another one click, basically. There was another little rock that's standing out here above the surface a little bit, and that, that was bugging me a little bit. It's just a little distracting on the edge. Um, so I'm going to see what the, what the perfect eraser does for me here. I have a feeling it will make it look like it's all underwater. Boom. Done. Perfect. So uh, a nice difference there. If I go back to the fit view and I turn that uh, stamp layer on and off, just gets rid of some, some simple distractions. Nothing big, but it's those subtle things that really set an image apart. So now the last thing I want to do to finish this uh, image is jump into effects. And now that I'm here in effects, I want to go ahead, open up my left panel and take a look at some of my presets. And I've got these, these summer landscape presets that don't affect any developed module settings. They're really just effects. I want to take a look in the quick view browser. Um, I'm in, I can enlarge this a little bit, get a nice big look of how these are going to affect my image. And, and I really like this look of the way Panther Falls is, is working on this image. Yeah, it basically just adds a little bit of compression from the HDR uh, look effect and filter and adds a little dynamic contrast. Not much, just a little bit. Uh, and then it, it messes around particularly in the greens. It's saturating the greens and, and making them just a little bit more towards the bluer stage of green. The one thing I think I want to do, I don't want to change much of this at all. Well, I might, I might go into the blues in my uh, color enhancing filter and, and just pull the brightness down just a little bit on the blues. That'll, that'll affect both the... Oh wait, I said aqua. That's a, my mistake here. I meant blues. Uh, and that should affect both the sky and the lake just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. Just a subtle little darkening of the sky and the reflecting sky in the lake. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a vignette. And anybody that watches my videos knows I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for the big softy. And the way I like to adjust the vignette is I, I turn the feather all the way off so I can really see what I'm doing. Uh, and I like to grab this little, this little target tool and hold down the option key and I can kind of drag the vignette wherever I want. I kind of want it to be a little bit smaller and I really want it focused on, you know, I don't want to affect the rock and the mountain, oops, uh, but I want to I want to shift it to where it's just protecting the rock and the mountain there. And then I'll put that feather all the way back to 100% and turn it way down. You know, I don't want a real dramatic vignette on this one. It's really just just a, a smidge. You can see it's it's not dramatic. It's just adding that little touch. It is dark of night, and I want that feeling. And I think the image is pretty much done. Um, if I take a look at the preview here, that's what we had after we blended the two focused images. There it is, finish edited. Just a nice bunch of extra pop. And I go ahead, click done. It's going to render that image, uh, and I'll have a new Photoshop document um, that that's stacked next to those two images in my folder. And, uh, you know, we've taken a scene that we couldn't quite get everything in focus. And with just the time to take one extra exposure and a few brush strokes in on one layers, we've got a, uh, a whole new image with everything razor sharpened in focus. So that's a great technique to take out in the field with you. Uh, I use it all the time. I hope it helps you guys out. I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much.